Each of the most violent neighborhoods in Chicago have their share of high profile shootings. These are just a few. In 2014, CNN did a documentary series called Chicagoland. In this series, they focused on gang members from around Chicago. Jason Barrett was highlighted in one of the series. He was from the Roseland neighborhood. At the time of the interview, he was in jail for robbery. He was released early, but found himself back in jail a short time later. Three years after this documentary aired, Jason Barrett was shot and killed in a drive-by shooting in the Wild 100s. Jason and Lee McCollum Jr. were both killed on the streets of Chicago after their stories aired on the series. Maggio News does not put young men like this on camera out of fear they will be later killed for going against the code of the gangs and exposing the true violent nature of the neighborhood. In December of 2016, career criminal Lionel Froggy Parks was out on parole and being monitored with an electronic bracelet. He shot and killed four people execution style and wounded another in a drug deal robbery. One of the murdered victims was pregnant. Lionel Froggy Park's case is a good example of how the judicial system sometimes fails the communities of Chicago. On April 10th, 2017, Cook County Judge Raymond Myers was shot and killed by two men outside his Roseland home in a robbery. He was not the intended robbery victim, his girlfriend was. She was shot in the leg during the robbery. The judge heard the gunshot, then ran outside and was shot multiple times. He later died at the hospital. The two suspects that shot the judge shot him and his girlfriend for a gym bag that had no money in it. Earl Wilson, age 45, was the gunman that fired the shots that killed the judge and wounded his girlfriend. He is a career criminal. He was arrested and charged with murder and multiple other felonies. The getaway driver, Joshua Smith, was also charged with murder. After the judge's murder, residents once again realized that no one is safe anymore. When they see me, they duck. <laughs> when I see them, I'm bossing. Jermaine Robinson, who rapped at FBG Brick, was a Flyboy gang member for STL. Hashtag that for Tukaville. Tukaville was a strong set of GDs from the Woodlawn community. Woodlawn stretched from Jackson Park to the Greater Grants Crossings neighborhood in Chirac. Woodlawn is bounded by Lake Michigan through 60th Street North to Martin Luther King Drive. The north edge of Woodlawn contains a portion of the University of Chicago College campus. The war in Chirac began the year the racial transition in Woodlawn saw its highest peak to predominantly black in 2010. And 2010 was the last flurry of white residents to leave the community. And ever since, the area is now 77% black minorities. The city started to divide quickly once Shondell Gregory and O.D. Perry were shot and killed. The death of those two teenagers caused a war between the BDs on 64th and the GDs on 63rd. Honoring Shondell, members adopted Tuka Gang. FBG Brick was 
took her crazy, but the relationship with Shondell was a stronger bond with Shakira and Wooski and FBG Duck. Okay, I'm finna take y'all down the block to 61st, 62nd, 63rd, 64th, and South Vernon to South Eberhardt. Here is the final hours of FBG Brick. FBG Brick, Wooski, and Jakira was on the front line for Tuka Gang. FBG Brick was born on the south side of Chirac. He was from the Ida B. Wells complex on 39th to King Drive. The Ida B. Wells was located in the Bronzeville neighborhood. The Ida B. Wells consisted of row houses and mid to high rise apartment buildings built between 1939 and 1941. They were demolished between 2002 and 2011. The projects were named after Ida B. Wells, an African-American journalist on the south side of Chicago. Due to the gang violence at the project, federal authorities failed efforts to fight the murder rate, constructed a plan to tear down the projects, which would reduce the war at the housing level, lowering the murder rate in Woodlawn. The Ida B. Wells were overthrown by the Black Pistons. Eugene Hairston, the co-founder of the gang, was shot dead at his home in September of 1988. The gang members at the projects there used it as a narcotics factory to push their weight. The Blackstones moved pounds of dope there daily and even named the drug spot the Cocaine Ring. The ring had mothers standing in long lines with their children in hand waiting to get their fix so they could go to the crib. The feds had had enough after the murder of five-year-old Eric Morris who was thrown from a 14th floor window of a vacant apartment after he refused to steal candy for two young men. The two young men were 10 and 11 years old. 10-year-old Jesse Rankins and 11-year-old Tykeese Johnson were charged with third-degree murder and were sentenced as minors and each were given a five-year prison sentence which would be expunged from their record at the age of 18. All the violence going on at the projects, FBG Brick's mother had seen enough and she packed up and moved out. She had three boys and three girls to move. Brick, Duck, Shell the Don, is Chia Weekly, who is FBG Butters BM, and two twin sisters, which one of the twins passed away in a fire. RIP to her, gang. Prior to the move on 63rd and STL, Brick's mother fell on hard terms and had to leave the kids with her mother, their grandmother, a few months while she got back on her feet. After she got her finances straight, she sent back for her babies. FBG Brick was in and out of jail, often rivaling with the op that he wasn't afraid to let his brick pop. Before he moved from 100th and State, he was part of the Bean Team, which was a clique from Ida B. Wells Project. After Brick got indicted, his older brother Jaquan jumped off the porch after Tuka died and made Tuka Gang. Jaquan, aka FBG Duck, was the first person to smoke on Tuka as a tribute to Shondell, but the ops quickly turned it to a diss and started smoking on his dead homies as payback for them dissing OD. Once Brick came home, he joined his brother's movement, FBG, which was formed by members of STL and EBT. Brick saw them give each other's numbers, so he chose the number 30. Jermaine Robinson is now FBG Brick. That was the name he knew he could live up to. Semantic noise, disruption that results from a sender using language that is not readily understood by the receiver. 
Amongst the members in Tuka Gang, Brick had built friendships with others outside of Woolon, but their street IQ was low, which turned Brick back to the squad. As Brick transitioned more one-sided towards his street status, he became more involved in the war between Tuka Gang and DeWitt. He began helping his gang formulate strategies to take down the Ops, even giving up locations if he saw members snoozing. Brick was efficient with the 30, so he named himself So. He kept the 30 by his side and took 12 search 7 members on the block and found the pole on Brick. He was booked in Cook County and held with no bond, being a felon in possession of a firearm. Same dude was running from me in the county. Now you won't smoke. Every dude is 600, no faces a rat. So what that make memo? If you a snitch, you shouldn't be hollering snitch K at all. Hang yourself. I never cared. You dudes just ain't right. Period. 2017. Exterminate all rats. I'm not trying to hear nothing. That dude took the stand five years ago on a murder. And said it was Brian, Scott Weekly, who shot and killed my free Stephen McGee. And the case still got beat, F boy. Ha ha. I'ma just leave that here for you, Memo, and face fans. Niggas want to play crazy on Twitter to get rat catch-up. Attention, good job, dummy. They see you, goofy. On Steve head, Memo never been a snitch K. Free nine. If you 24 and up and into it with the shorties, kill yourself, grown goofy. My shorties got dudes stressing, going bald. On Steve, this summer we pulling up with a whole lot of guns. On Scrap. Yo ass a clown boy, and what the hell's going on? Don't get exposed. I ain't wanna tell nobody how you was running from me on the yard. Yo ass stay real close to the CO. Facts. You shorties is crazy. Y'all forgot y'all playing with a grown man. On Lil Boo, Memo 600 never ran on no dude or told. He a real dude. Finger stay on that trigger. This can't be the same dude that was calling me on Facebook, trying to kick it. Jermaine's death caused the younger guys in Tuka Gang to get up with the opposition on 64th The King Drive. FBG Brick caught a lot of heat from the streets when his name flew around the block that he gave away the location of Big A from O Block. Brick went hard on 600 as one of the members testified on MOB Scrap that he was the killer of 600 Lil Steve. He took the stand and pointed out MOB Scrap as the shooter. This lit a fire for FBG Brick, FBG Duck, MOB Dusky, MOB Scrap, and MOB Ruger. As the gang members in Tuka Gang and MOB were calling out members of 600 for appearing in open court to testify under oath that MOB Scrap was a killer. Despite the snitching with MOB Scrap, he was still able to beat the case and FBG Brick made it very known that 600 was snitching on his cousin. Residents in Chicago went to Twitter to emphasize that FBG Brick notified Kate Get Right and another that Big A was at the store on 64th The King Drive. Moments later, Big A was shot and killed on 64th. In the same rival between O Block and Tuka Gang, T Roy was shot under the same circumstances that his location was given up by FBG Brick to members of TW. T Roy was killed in a rival dispute between O Block and STL over the death of Boss Trail and many others. The feud between Tuka Gang and O Block caused many members to be killed across the gun line in the Woodlawn community that ran down 63rd and King Drive. Members in MOB were cousins to members in Tuka Gang. MOB Scrap and Wooga were directly related to Brick and FBG Duck.
about Brick was FBG Crazy. He was also Dial's for Scrap, Jakira, and Tutu. He clapped back on Twitter for anyone trying to diss or cloud up off their name. He spoke on Face from 600 that snitched on Scrap, stating, Face did an interview with Say Cheese, Capitate 600 for snitching on Nine and C Day, but he told on Scrap, all them rats tell him, on Tuka, on Tutu. Funny how his paperwork on everybody but Tay 600, yet he the only one they dissing. All 600 weak as hell. See they watch 600 get beat up by chicken from EBT. Facts. If you real and you rockin' with your homie, whether he a snitch or a killer. I still can't believe Face from 600 pointed out scrap on the stand and 600 still gang gang with him. Death moved itself into these young men's hearts and caused wars amongst each other. Social media gave them ammo to fire shots from long distance, but their words would not go unpunished. Jermaine Robinson, FPG Brick, was gunned down alongside Kobe Mack on July 17th of 2017 in the Woodlawn neighborhood. Both men were ambushed as they stood on the front side alley along 63rd and STL, less than 100 feet from where Tuka and Jakira was gunned down. Rest in peace to all them young kids. Jermaine Robinson had just begun his rap career on the south and east side of Chicago. However, he is a South Shore resident. FBG Brick, Stanley Jacoby Mack are standing in the gangway on South Street St. Lawrence in the Woodlawn community. Three killers from the rival gang ran up and shot Kobe Mack in the head and FBG Brick in the back as he tried to escape. Calls came in through 911 that Brick and Kobe had been shot and they are non responsive. As ambulance arrived, they alert medical personnel to bring more equipment as both members are DOA, which is dead upon arrival. The hit on FBG Brick and Kobe Mack shut down Woodlawn for hours as detectives were searching for the killers. Two detectives and four police units parked on O Block to prevent retaliation from STL and EBT. Members from Taekwon World tweeted, wait till 12 leave that bit, and we gon' blick that bitch up on folks in them graves. 